So, yeah, I said I would keep doing this. And I kind of kept pushing it off and pushing it off. And I kind of decided to initially I was going to do it like the weekend it came out. And then I forgot about it and I kind of got busy. And then I kept saying, oh, I'll do it, I'll do it. And I kind of said, oh, I'll do it after Halloween. So now here it is, finally. It's been four weeks since this movie's been released. But I'm finally going to talk about No Time to Die. Spoilers and all. Let's just dive right into it. So No Time to Die actually does not begin with James Bond. It actually begins on... A young Madeline Swan from, you know, she was from the first movie, from the last movie, and now it cuts to her childhood, and basically she's living alone with her mom, and this guy comes in with a mask, and basically this guy just kills her mom, and, you know, the daughter manages to escape somehow, and, you know, she falls through the ice, and this character, Safin, you know, he's played by Rami Malek in the movie, and... And he's like, huh, I guess I should save you at some point. And he does. It's not really made entirely clear at first, but we kind of figure it out later on, like, a little bit of why she saved him, why he saved her. And, you know, the opening scene I thought was pretty good. I thought, like, the tension between, like, you know, this, like, this girl trying to hide from this man who obviously killed her mom. And eventually, like, we kind of figure out, like, oh, he was trying to kill her father. And we'll explain why later on. So, anyway, it jump cuts to the present, or basically right after Spectre. Uh, Madeline and James are out in their bouts. They're kind of, like, hanging out and such. Like, you know, now they're in Matera, I believe it is. And even though, like, you know, Bond's now with Madeline and he's, you know, he's kind of happy with her, he's still upset over, you know, what happened to Vesper all the way back in Casino Royale. So much so that it's amazing that they go to the location where her grave is. And admittedly, this is a very sad moment. I, I did feel emotion for it. And it's like, you know, he's like, I miss you and such. And he reminisces about her a bit. And then all of a sudden, it just explodes. And it causes his hearing loss for a moment. And, you know, it's a very, it's a nice scene at first. And then it just cuts to this action scene that's like nonstop. There's a ton of, there's explosions. There's a car chase. There's everything in between. You kind of see a bit of the car chase in the trailers. And again, this is really cool as well to, this whole, like, action scene, it's like, everything's happening, and it's really well done, well choreographed, and, you know, kind of get to meet one of the henchmen, you know, one of the henchmen has a bionic eye, and that was really fun to see, it's like, oh, it's kind of like one of those old henchmen from one of those old Bond movies, which, admittedly, kind of can be cheesy at times, but, you know, I, I thought it kind of worked, so anyway, during this whole car chase scene, Madeline really needs to tell James something, and James like, I know, because if you know from the last movie, she was kind of, like, involved with Spectre a lot. So, she he's starting to think, oh, you were the one who did this. You brought me here. So, it's like, that's, they don't actually say it. He's kind of implying that. But I immediately when she said, oh, I have to tell you something, I'm like, I know what you're going to tell him. And eventually they escape these guys, they kill some. And because he, feel, he felt betrayed by Madeline... He puts her on a train in a very sad scene that begins the whole opening credit scene. And immediately from the moment when she's holding on to her stomach as she's crying over James putting her on a train, I'm like, yeah, that confirmed it. Like, I, I, you don't need to tell me anything else. That basically confirmed what you were going to say to him. And it just, it's not that it's a bad move, but it's just so obvious. Maybe, maybe it's because I've seen way too many movies it's like, I just know at this point, it's just not as interesting the 100th time as it was the first time. But I guess now we know, eventually we'll get to that, so whatever. Anyway, cut to this opening credits scene. Not not opening credits, but like, that was the opening credits scene, but the opening credits in themselves with the Billie Eilish song. And mainly I didn't like the song at first, but like as it played in the credit sequence, I thought, okay, it, it works. And as you'll see throughout the movie, it kind of like in her place throughout the entire movie, and I thought that was very effective. So, anyway, moving on. Eventually, it cuts to uh, MI6 headquarters, and then, you know, jumps five years later, and we cut to MI6 headquarters. Uh, David Densick, that was the guy who played the other henchman in this movie. Like, he's kind of like a nerd. He's kind of an outcast there. And I kind of liked how in this scene, it was like, okay, these co-workers are kind of like, you know, laughing. They're kind of having fun while they're doing their job. And, like, they kind of make fun of him during this whole thing. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, those guys break in. You kind of see them. The guys who are climbing on the side of the building. They come in. They kidnap this guy. And basically, it's kind of implied that it was his plan all along. So it's like, it's kind of funny that you got your revenge after, you know, you laugh, laugh to your coworkers for being dicks to you. So I thought that was pretty good. And basically, it's kind of revealed that this guy 
designed these nanobots that, in a bioweapon that involves nanobots that can encode DNA so they can kill specific people. It was a thing from MI6. And this is kind of a disappointing thing because I feel like there's a part of me that's like, okay, it kind of plays into this whole, you know, paying homage to James Bond in general. And it does work for the most part. At the same time, I feel like, you know, why would MI6 develop this? And the movie kind of addresses this, but not really. It's like, no, we needed a weapon. It's like, eh, could you think of something better? Like something that isn't so controversial. Not in the sense, like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like, oh, we're the good guys. So why would you develop this? It just feels way too, it just seems way too out of place. But given the fact that, you know, MI6 is a little bit corrupted in this version of James Bond, I guess it makes sense. So anyway, we cut over to James Bond. He's in Jamaica. He's basically just moved on. He's no longer 007. He's just on his own and basically he runs into Felix, you know, Jeffrey Wright from Casino Royale and Quantum Salas. He's back in his life and he's, uh, Bond is alerted to this whole thing by, uh, by Felix. And he's like, no, I don't want to do it. Even with uh, Billy Magnuson, who I thought he was pretty good in this movie. You remember him? He was in, he was the white guy in Aladdin. He was also in Game Night. And here he's pretty good. He wasn't good in Aladdin, but that's not the point. Um, but, uh, eventually he's like, no, I don't want to be involved in this. I'm done with that life. I don't want to go back to it. And then eventually he runs into Lashana Lynch, who plays Nomi, who she's the new 007. She's been doing this for a couple of years now at this point. Again, we jumped five years. So anyway, we move on. She tells him about this whole thing and like what is going on. These whole nanobots is like why MI6 did it. And so that is the reason it's like, you know, I'll do it. I'll do it. So it's like, it's kind of weird that he would do it, but then again, it's like, again, given some of the things that MI6 has done to Bond in these last few movies, I guess it kind of makes sense, but oh well. Eventually he goes to Cuba, he meets this woman named Paloma, she's played by Ana de Armas, she's a CIA agent, and honestly, I thought she was one of the best characters in the movie, I thought she was really fun, she was really funny, her action scenes are really cool, she had great chemistry with Daniel Craig, obviously after working with her in Knives Out... It makes sense. And I honestly feel upset that this is the only movie she's probably going to appear in. Like, there's no spinoff. Uh, obviously, she's not going to be the next 007 or anything. But uh, it's a little upsetting. I kind, of wanted, I kind of wanted to see a little bit more of her. I thought she was really good in her scenes. But anyway, they infiltrate a Spectre meeting, which isn't really a meeting. It's actually a birthday party for Blofeld. Remember him? He was the villain in the last movie played by Christoph Waltz. Yeah, even though he's, like, in prison now... He's, you know, teleconferencing. He was doing Zoom before Zoom was a thing, I guess. And, yeah, and basically he's like, hey, good thing you're here, James Bond. I'm going to kill you. It's like, why would you think that this was a good idea? Why would you think that? Why would you think it's a good idea, James Bond, to come here, to infiltrate? I get why you're doing it, but why would you do this at the same time? It's like, obviously all these Spectre agents are going to try to kill you. Why are you here? I don't know. But anyway, instead of actually killing James Bond, uh, the guy, the uh, David Densig, the guy who was kidnapped, he managed to change all the nanobots and basically now kills all the members of Spectre. It's like, well, that's convenient enough. So anyway, moving on, they encounter the guy who's like the bionic eye. Remember I mentioned him earlier. And this also is like, it kind of, it's kind of fun too, seeing like all these like, like weird henchmen that are like from cheesy James Bond movies. Like, I feel like that would be in an old James Bond movie, but no, it's actually in a present day one. And also there's a lot of use of puns, which kind of work, because again, cheesy James Bond, it's an homage, like, it's like, I forgot the exact line, because again, I saw this a month ago, it's like, we didn't see eye to eye or something like that, it's like, <laughs> that was admittedly funny, I, I don't care. And it's like, and there was another one where it's like, oh, that watch blew up or something, or it's like, uh, that that watch blew his mind or something. It's like, yeah, that kind of works. And honestly, it's kind of weirdly a funny James Bond movie, even despite the seriousness of it. It still really works for the most part. Like at one point, he actually calls Billy Magnuson the Book of Mormon, which is like, I I can't see that. I can't see that now. That's just too perfect for him. So anyway, they get this guy. I'm gonna call him Baldo throughout. That's his name throughout the entire movie. I'm gonna call him that throughout this rest of this review. So they get the guy. And it's like, okay, everything's fine, but, like, there's someone else. There's someone else that I'm working with. And it's actually revealed that Billy Magnuson is this double agent working for Rami Malek as well. And we get into this really, it, not really the best fight scene, but 
you know, I didn't expect Billy Magnuson to really be in this movie and actually fight James Bond. So that was cool. Eventually he kills Felix, which is very sad. Um, I didn't want to see Felix die, but since this is the last Daniel Craig movie, uh, it's unfortunate. So anyway, he kills Felix. Bond manages to escape even though the boat was drowning and such. So anyway... And then we cut to Rami Malek's Safin. Like, all these years later, he's still managed to be in contact with Madeline all these years. And this is kind of weird, because, like, even though Safin and Safin saved Madeline all those years ago, now it looks like they're the same age. It doesn't really work. It's like, um, are you guys the same age? Even though, like, she was a kid all those years ago, and you were, you look like the same age you did back then. Doesn't really make sense. Is it that whole up thing where it's like Charles Muntz and Carl are now the same age? It doesn't really make sense. I don't know. So anyway, been in contact with Madeline. He kind of wants her to kill Blofeld and eventually find out why. Um, we'll find out later, like, why he's after Spectre. But, like, honestly, Rami Malek in this movie, I said in my initial review, I didn't like him as a villain. I felt like he was honestly the weakest part of this movie. And... I still kind of stand by that, but his performance is fine. It's does it's not like it's not nearly as good as say Le Chief, played by Mads Mikkelsen in Casino Royale, or nearly as fun as Javier Bardem in Skyfall. But he's definitely a lot better than Christoph Waltz in Spectre or you know Dominic Green from uh, Quantum of Solace. But I don't know. It's kind of underwhelming for me. I just felt like it was both too much and not enough at the same time. Like it felt like. You know, he was given, like, way too much about him, and yet at the same time, he was kind of holding back his performance a bit. It kind of mismatched for me. Like, at least with someone like Le Chief, like, his emotions were right. At least Silva, he was kind of having fun. And it just, it didn't quite work for me. It was honestly the weakest uh, performance in this movie, by far. So, also, uh, Bond manages to get a meeting with Blofeld, and I thought that was really cool, where it's like, Oh, Blofeld's in this prison that's actually moving. It's like, that's kind of cool, I guess. Again, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like saying that's going to be part of like the whole James Bond homage. But, oh well. Now he finds out that Madeline is there and they, he comes into contact with her, which means that now he has the nanobots that were supposed to kill Blofeld. So when he kills Blofeld, so he gets to Blofeld and accidentally kills him. Yeah. And eventually, oh yeah, Blofeld revealed, oh yeah, it was me. Yeah, are you really surprised by that? It was really surprised that, you know, he set up Vesper's tomb to blow up, even though he's been in prison. Oh, well, he wanted her to blame Madeline. And he wanted, you know, he wanted Bond to blame Madeline for it. And, yeah, it's, again, like, it's not really that surprising. Sometimes the reveals in this movie aren't as surprising as they think it is. Like, it's not really that game-changing. It's not that crazy. It's not that insane it's just it thinks it's a lot more important than it is even though it's like anyone who's ever seen a movie can predict what some of these surprises are so and we'll get to the one about madeline eventually so eventually yeah bond touches blofeld it kills him so anyway let's move on to bond and uh madeline uh bond goes to see madeline she's in her childhood home where she's now raising her five-year-old daughter can you guess whose daughter that is Besides Madeline's, who else could it be? Um, well, anyway, Madeline's like, oh, no, don't worry. She's not yours. It's like, yeah, obviously, it's not James Bond's daughter. Clearly. When was the last time you saw her? It was five years. She has a four-year-old daughter now. Can't figure that one out. That's weird. Oh, well. Anyway, she knows all about Safin's backstory because obviously they've been in contact for so long. And honestly, this is the part that I thought was very underwhelming, where it's just, it's all exposition, and I felt like it should have come from Rami Malek and not from Leah Sado. Um, It should have been from him, because, like, his backstory is like, oh, my parents were killed by Blofeld, so I want to kill Spectre too. And, you know, I wish it came from Rami Malek. It would have been more impactful. Like, he didn't have to say it out loud. Like, he didn't have to, you know... He didn't have to, you know, monologue from Incredibles, you know. He didn't have to go on a monologue about how his evil plan and about why he's doing it and all that. But it would have been a nice touch if he did it instead of her. Instead of it's just this whole kind of dull monologue. It just didn't work for me. Um, anyway, 
eventually Bond is found. He takes Madeline and her daughter. Just her daughter. Remember that. And, yeah, they go out in this car chase. Uh, Billy Magnuson is back. And, you know, during this whole thing, he... Uh, he Bond kills Billy Magnuson's character. It's it's a kind it's kind of fun. Like they have all these like traps and such. It works. It's really fun to kill a few henchmen. Saffin's there, kidnaps Madeline and her daughter again. Her daughter. So anyway, move on. Uh, Bond and the new 007. They kind of bond, and this is a nice moment. Uh, Nomi, that's her name throughout the entire movie. Um, Nomi gives him the 007 name back just for this last mission. And, again, a lot of the performances are really good. That was a really nice moment from her. And so, I wouldn't mind too much if she was actually the next Bond, but I don't know if that's actually going to happen. So, anyway, they infiltrate Safin's headquarters. They're building all these nanobots to kill millions of people worldwide. And this was a moment where I thought, oh, um, maybe that's why they delayed this movie for so long. Because a global pandemic was just starting and they're, they have this thing that's going to kill millions of people. Maybe not the best movie. And then we realize, oh, yeah, this is way worse than we expect. So, anyway, that was just a side note. The Valdo is now mass-producing all these nanobots to affect people. The Saffin wants to kill millions of people. And again, he's like, oh, I just want to clean evil from the world. I just want to tidy it up. It's just easier that way. And again, it's just not that interesting. Even though, like, this is their only real conversation throughout the entire movie, I just didn't really feel any sort of connection. Like... There was a connection between Daniel Craig and Mads Mikkelsen, Daniel Craig and Javier Bardem, even a little bit of connection between Daniel Craig and Christoph Waltz. Here, eh. Again, Rami Malek is probably the most disappointing part of this movie. I love Rami Malek, and he is the most disappointing part of this movie to me. So anyway, Bond kills a few henchmen, uh, Nomi kills Valdo, and it, this was really cool. She actually pushed him into the vat of nanobots. And that was really cool. I was really glad about that. Uh, Madeline escapes. She actually takes out the henchman with the bionic eye. That was a lot of fun. And I also kind of like this in retrospect. The daughter managed to, to run away from, uh, manages to run away from, you know, Rami Malek throughout this entire movie. Safin. And I thought it was really nice. Like, oh, it's kind of like what her mother did when she was a child. That is actually very nice in retrospect. And that was fun, I guess. Um, anyway, Nomi takes Madeline and Matilda off the island. And Bond commands Q to release all these missiles to the island, which is, like, it's amazing that they found the coordinates right away for this. Uh, also, as a side note, it's kind of revealed that Q is actually LGBTQ. So, that was actually a nice touch. It's it's not made a big deal of, and I thought, that was nice. So, anyway, uh, Safin, before, like, kill, trying to kill James Bond, Safin injects Bond with nanobots. They're going to, basically, they're programmed to kill Madeline and Matilda. So, uh, you know... Her daughter, not James Bond's daughter. Again, that's kind of infuriating, but I'll address that. So anyway, Bond manages to kill Safin, and then when he realizes the whole thing, the missiles are coming, he has no time to get off the island, he's going to have nanobots that are going to kill uh, Madeline no matter what. So he manages to get a hold of her one last time, and he's like, I love you, move on from me. And, yeah... And eventually Madeline's like, oh yeah, she's your daughter. And again, we all knew that. We all knew. Like, anyone who has never seen a movie before already knows about it. And, you know, James Bond dies. And I have a few problems with this scene. One, um, again, the whole daughter reveal is not as interesting as it thinks it is. Um, it's just, it's like, why drag this out for so long? Like, we all knew that she was his daughter. It just doesn't really add up to anything. It's not, it's just, again, it's just a movie that thinks, like, its big reveals are really big and really massive, but we've seen them all before. And that's one of the few disappointments of this movie in retrospect. Also, it's like, why are you throwing everything at Bond? It's like, oh, there's no way to get off this island. There's a missile coming. I have nanobots. They're going to kill the woman that I love. Like... It's like, you could have just stuck with one. Like, oh, I don't have time to get off the island. It's like, there's no way off this island. Either way, it's like, why go all those extra miles? It's like, you can't just simply, you know, leave him on the island to die. Uh, and yeah, James Bond, he dies. This is the first James Bond movie where James Bond actually dies. It's, it's sad. I was sad throughout this movie. 
And that was very heartbreaking. That was very upsetting. But it works for the movie they were trying to go for. And I think this is the first time that we've seen a 007 movie where, you know, James Bond actually gets a final mission. And it actually feels like there's a sense of finality to it. I don't think any of the other Bonds have gotten that. So that was really interesting to see in any way. MI6, you know, everyone's there. You know, know me, the new 007. M, Money, Penny, Q, Tanner, they're all there. They're honoring his memory, which, you know, that's nice. They kind of screwed him over the years, but nice to honor you now that you're dead. And Madeline goes off with her daughter. They go back to they go back to where they were, the be where she was with Bond at the beginning. She's like, let me tell you a story about a man named James Bond. And again, it's nice, but it's like, why would you go back to this place where it's like, you know, that was the worst heartbreak of your life. Remember? He put her on the train there. I guess that's growth. But it's 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 nice. It's nice when you don't think about it too hard. So overall, No Time to Die. I do really enjoy this movie. It is one of the better Daniel Craig, James Bond movies. I think if I, if I would rank them, it'd be Casino Royale at 1, uh, Skyfall 2, No Time to Die 3, Spectre 4, and then Quantum of Solace 5. Um, I do think it has a lot of great homages to previous Bond movies. I do think the performances are really good. The action scenes are really creative and they're a lot of fun. There's a great sense of finality to it. But I felt underwhelmed by Rami Malek's villain. And again, by the whole, uh, you know, how they think their big reveals are so big that they have to drag them out for so long. And yet, they're not really that surprising because most people have predicted these by now. So... Overall, I do really enjoy this movie. I'll still stick with my 3 out of 4 for this movie. I said, oh, I'm going to give this 3 out of 5 out of 4. I really enjoyed it. But the more I thought of it, it's because of those problems that I have, I'm going to lower it to 3. It's still a great. It's still a really good movie and a nice send-off for Daniel Craig's Bond. Um, as for where I think Bond could go now, um, I don't know. I wouldn't mind if Lashana Lynch uh, came back for another movie as the new 007. I think it could work. I honestly wouldn't mind seeing a spinoff with Ana de Armas' character. I thought she was really good. But, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people really want a big-name actor as Bond next, like Henry Cavill. He was considered before for Casino Royale before Daniel Craig got the role. So people even want Tom Hardy for the role, but I'm like, eh. It's not that I think they're bad actors, but aren't they really busy with a lot of other projects? I feel like, because Daniel Craig was an unknown, I feel like they should kind of continue with this trend of, like, having unknowns as James Bond and also maybe skew a little bit younger maybe like I don't know I feel like they shouldn't have some 40 plus year old guy doing it I feel like someone under 40 would be a little bit better for James Bond but for the for the next iteration I mean so I don't know where they'll go I hear they're gonna talk about it sometime next year but we'll see how that goes so, what do you think of No Time to Die? Uh, what do you think of the movie? What do you think they should do with James Bond next? Comment down below, subscribe to the channel. This is Pat, and stay safe.